Are you aware of the cult connections and history of familial murder in Christine Brown's family? To be honest with you, it's my subscribers who sent me down this rabbit hole. Christine Brown's family roots and genealogical history are under scrutiny after a lady named Anna LeBaron opened up in a bombshell interview with The Sun. Anna LeBaron revealed a cult connection between herself and Christine Brown. She announced that Brown's maternal grandfather, Florin LeBaron, is the brother of Everell LeBaron. LeBaron and Brown are cousins once removed, and the discovery of their family history led to a very dark revelation. Because it is none other than Everell LeBaron who brutally murdered Christine's other very famous grandfather. So let's take a look at Christine and her royal polygamist pedigree. That Christine and Cody's relationship was more about improving Cody's standing and place in the community. Okay, guys, so here we go with the audio clip from the show. And the name of the clip in the archive of Sister Wives is actually called Blue Blooded Polygamist in reference to Christine herself. I think I was attracted to how positive you were. You know, um, I was also attracted to your pedigree. I know. <laughs> <laughs> she had a lot of family that she was, she's a blue blood polygamist. She, her family lines in polygamy go really, really deep. I'm a blue blood polygamist. <laughs> yeah. She, uh, he married me for the money. Uh, no, yeah. he married me for the title. <laughs> you see, Christine's grandfather is named Rulon Alred, and he was one of the leaders of the Apostolic Brethren, the church that Cody and the rest of the sister wives belong to. Christine Brown was born in 1972, and she was only five years old when her grandfather, Rulon Alred, was brutally murdered by Ervil LeBaron. On May 10th, 1977, Rulon Alred sat in his Murray, Utah office when two women wearing sunglasses and wigs walked in. They immediately opened fire on this church leader. Alred received a fatal wound in that shooting, and he died later that day from those wounds. The man who killed Christine's grandfather was also related to Christine Brown. Rulon Alred did not associate any longer with Ervil LeBaron because Ervil broke off into his own sector and made his own rules and protocols in his polygamous cult. You see, Ervil and his polygamous community were predominantly stationed and living down in Mexico. The Church of the Lamb of God was started by Ervil LeBaron, and if you ask me, his name literally sounds like you're saying evil, which definitely suits him. Ervil had 51 children with 13 different women, and during those two decades, he gained hundreds of followers. His children, or what I like to call his little minions, allegedly murdered 20 people. Mexico authorities arrested Ervil in 1979 and charged him for murder of another polygamous sect leader and was jailed for life in Utah. Ervil later died in 1981, and the thing about cults as they are hard to stop. His remaining cult members had a hit list of people that had supposedly betrayed Ervil and they planned to take their revenge and needless to say, never join a cult. Can you imagine little Christine Brown growing up completely terrified that the people who killed her grandfather could possibly try to come after herself or her parents or other people that she loved? Because Ervil didn't just kill Christine's grandfather, he killed several people in the family and within the community who he felt had done him wrong. Ervil's life is plagued with a history of serious psychological issues leading up to all of these events. But most prominently, he was living in a community in Mexico where he and his brothers were struggling with power plays to take charge of the polygamist ideology that ran that sect of the cult. Misogyny, murder, and mock tapioca. Hmm, story. Magic school bus going back to 1953. Short Creek. So picture it. Short Creek. 1953, and if you did not, just, I'm not even gonna tell you what it is. If you didn't picture something right now, you know what, you need to leave. Anyway, so in 1953, the way that Sam Brower, the author of Sons of Perdition, which is about the Lost Boys at the FLDS, if you don't know about that, totally research it, said that 
The authorities showed up with the expectation that they were going to open this gate and all the women were going to leave like cattle that was being freed or something like that. When in reality, indoctrination and what was going on out there doesn't really lend to that. Now, what does it have to do with Christine? Christine's grandfather and her great grandfather. Now we're talking about Rulon Allred, who was her grandfather. This is the time when they left Short Creek and all the stories that you hear Christine tell in the show about being raised in fear. Um, and you know, and, and these raids and pulling families apart. That's actually true. And that happened in 1953. This is a good read. And on a lot of stuff, if you can find stuff like this, articles written by the people who were actually there or who were affected by the situation. Now, Rulon Allred um, and his buddy, Ervil, well, I guess not not his buddy, which would also be Ervil, was Christine's great uncle. Now, with a name like that, <laughs> So Ervil Morel LeBaron, and I say it like the mushroom, like the Morel, so if I'm wrong, you can go ahead and correct me on that. And LeBaron, obviously, like the Chrysler, I'm old. Wow, that's great. Okay, so when they all left the Crick is what they call it, Short Creek, which by the way, mm, is where Warren Jeffs and his whole family is from and where all that really fucked up stuff happened. Yeah, that's Short Creek, okay? So let's just keep that in perspective. And the ties at the roots, because these people are so interwoven that I don't actually think there is a unique DNA strand between any of them. I think it's just all the same one at this point because they are literally just, you know, like Polly Shore said, interweave them. So Ervil decides that he is the one true prophet, but like 10 other dudes just, you know, decide the same thing. So, mm, you think Ervil sat back and was like, you know what? I am a man of God and I'm going to let God take care of this, right? I do need to make a quick segue. Um, did you know that Cody has his own fan club and they sell stickers like... Wow, a Cody Brown fan club. Can you believe it, guys? So as I was saying, Ervil LeBaron was fighting with several of his brothers to be in charge of the sect they had created down in Mexico. But Ervil decided to take everything to an extreme because he was losing the battle for power in that community. He quickly turned everything around and killed his brother, Joel LeBaron. Joel had a lot of power and he, and he was highly favored to be the next leader. It's highly complicated because Ervil's mind was kind of like the mind of someone with bipolar disorder or even schizophrenia. Reports have surfaced that Ervil was known to have talked to himself from his early teenage years and often said he saw things that weren't actually there. In some ways, he believed this made him a prophet. It also made him highly volatile and difficult to control. After Ervil killed Joel, the proverbial shit hit the fan. Ervil started traveling around, going back up into the United States, hanging out in Utah and other places where he could hide from the law. Meanwhile, the community in Mexico was in a state of turmoil. There was a lot of fear and controversy. People who took Ervil's side and people who took the side of the other brothers or men who wanted to get Ervil out of the community. Anna LeBaron wrote in her book, The Polygamist's Daughter, that she came from a sister wives family that makes Cody Brown's bunch look tiny. Her father, Ervil LeBaron, took on 13 wives and they had 51 children between them all. Anna says that her father, Ervil, took a doctrine and then became fanatical with it, which reflected in the way that he practiced. After ordering the death of more than 25 people, eventually the law caught up with him. Ervil targeted rival church leaders in his quest for ultimate dominance and revenge against those he perceived as having wronged him or having dirtied his religious convictions. Actually, after Ervil was jailed in 1979, he continued to act as a mob boss, having his children and other family members carry out hits at his direction. Let's listen to what Anna LeBaron has to say. Fortunately, not all of my siblings made it out alive. Several of my siblings are serving life sentences in prison for the hits they carried out that my father ordered. But none of my family believes that my dad was any kind of prophet. And we are all out of the cult. The cult disbanded in the late 80s and early 90s. And there has been no violence um, or bloodshed ever since. Looking at the woman above who shares some of the same DNA as Christine Brown, it's amazing how much they look alike. But 
As Anna LeBaron said, as much as she'd love to meet Christine Brown with the family history the way it is, that will probably never happen. There's more to the story, and it's all really complicated, but kind of the point of why I'm sharing this in relationship to the sister wives is that it gives me an interesting peek into what Christine's childhood must have been like. I really perceive it must have been laced with fear and tragedy at times. First, she comes from this family with a crazy history of familial murder and mental illness. But then on top of that, as Christine has mentioned many times on the show, Christine's family was at Short Creek when the town was invaded by the government officials and children were separated from their mothers and families. I'm not sure if this is talked about enough on the show, but it turns out that Christine has a long history of activism surrounding polygamy. Before the show was even a twinkle in TLC's eye, Christine was working on polygamist activist groups, wanting to be more open and honest about her lifestyle, wanting it to go mainstream. I've come to believe a huge part of why the Sister Wives show even came to be is because of Christine and her single-mindedness in wanting to make a difference in the lives of her kids and others that chose to practice polygamy. So, it remains unsurprising to me that Christine was the first of the wives to physically leave Cody. She's got a history of being brave, fighting back, going up against the mainstream. There's a lot more to share about Short Creek the LeBaron family, the All Reds, and many, many rabbit holes to peer into. But for tonight, friends, I'm off to bed. Thanks for joining me for this video, and I really hope you take some time to head down your own Sister Wives rabbit hole. We're also the daughter of someone that was convicted and went to prison for, um, how would you say Because he didn't ever do the killings, but he corrupted he directed the killings of multiple uh, people that you knew. There's um, 28 people confirmed um, that he ordered to be killed. And depending on which investigator, and there has been a lot of investigators, um, up to 38 people that um, went missing. Some people have never been found. And that includes people in my family. Wow. And when you were growing up, People were being murdered and you were running from the law, but you didn't necessarily know growing up that this was even happening, right? You were just knowing that you were going, you were going from Mexico to uh, all these different states, Texas, Colorado, but, and you were always going place to place and they would say, never talk to authorities, but you didn't even know that these killings were going on or that people, I mean, not only were people you knew being killed, but people you knew were doing the killings too. Yeah. And all of that was happening without my knowledge because I was a child. So I didn't, I wasn't aware of any of that until much, much later in life. Wow. So, so I think you should probably tell people like who my father was and what all of that was happening because this is just so unbelievable what happened and Maybe some of your listeners are familiar with my father, whose name is Ervil LeBaron. Um, he, yes. was, um, he was notorious in the 70s and 80s um, for all the um, criminal activity that was happening in his cult. A very long line of uh, people in my family that believe and practiced the teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And that's how they want to be identified. So... That's why I use their full name just out of respect for what they want to be called. And so in the future, if we say, um, if I say fundamentalist Mormon, that's, I'm talking about my father and those kinds of practices, or just the LDS church, just for short, um, that's what I mean is the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. What? The fun, I, was, I was born into a fundamentalist Mormon family and yeah. my father's grandfather moved his family to Mexico in the early 1900s, right after the LDS church um, forbade polygamy from being practiced. So it was um, in the 18, in 1890, they stopped practicing polygamy or said it in word uh, they, like they were saying they were going to stop. But then in the early 1900s, there was another revelation that where they actually meant business because people kept practicing it and they kept endorsing it. But in the early 1900s, the, it was 
it came down like, do not practice this anymore. You will be excommunicated if you continue practicing polygamy. And there are people who believe that there were um, secret meetings where the LDS church told uh, John Taylor, I believe, and a few others, keep practicing this and keep this practice on the face of the earth. We can't acknowledge you and we can't, you know, be part of it, but you keep practicing so that Joseph Smith's um, doctrine and all of that would stay on the earth. And so that's where all the fundamentalist groups get their authority to practice polygamy as because they're coming down from those lines okay. of, of people who continue to practice it. My grandfather took his two wives and children to Mexico in the early 1900s. And he founded the LeBaron colony down in Mexico. And my family has lived down there ever since. I was born in the LeBaron colony. And to clarify, someone just asked a good question and this will help us explain everything. They said, was your friend, was your dad friends with Warren Jeffs? Um, Marilyn asked that. So let's explain that too, how that's. Uh, I don't fun- know that. I don't know that my dad was friends with any of the other um, Mormon fundamentalist prophets. He considered everybody else that said they were a prophet to be false prophets because he was the one mighty and strong. 